Today I'm going to show you how to connect the Audio-Technica LP120 USB turntable to speakers or to an external source. Hey there. I'm Peter Tompkins. Do you wish you could fulfill your dream to be an artist? I'm an award-winning documentary film director, as well as a fine artist, author of over 150 songs with over 30 years of experience as a guitar player, performer, and 15 years as a photographer. I'm going to show you how I made my dream come true, so you can too. When I bought this turntable, I was under the impression that you could just pull it out of the box plug it into the wall socket for power, take the USB cord and plug it into your computer and voila, you could listen to your records. And unfortunately, it's not that simple. See, when I was a kid, I had a King's Point stereo and it was all contained in one unit. It was one unit that had a cassette deck, a tuner and a turntable. And you didn't have to adjust the arm. I don't think you could even adjust the arm. It had a, a built-in preamp and power source, and the speakers were non-powered. So you just take the connect, connected um, speaker cables and plug them into speakers, and they worked. You didn't have to plug the speakers into a separate power source. This, the, the Audio-Technica LP120, is a different animal. This is just a turntable, and when you buy it, it doesn't come with speakers. <clears throat> and there's a couple different ways you can connect it to speakers or to an external speaker system to get it to play your records. But you have to have powered speakers. You can't have non-powered speakers because the turntable won't provide power to the speakers. But this took me a lot of research because I'd never had just a turntable. And it was really a kind of unclear what to put where and what to plug in. And I'll go over all that with you. I turn this around so you can see the back of the turntable. And there's only three wires in this turntable. There's the, the power plug. This is your AC power plug. And it, I've got mine fed back here to plug in the outlet back here. Just a traditional two prong power plug. This comes out of the back. This is to go to an RCA in. So this is RCA out to RCA in on a board. And it's, it's hardwired into the turntable. And this is your USB connector. So you you can play the stereo and play it out through this USB. You plug it in here, standard USB plug. And you just slide that into one of your USB ports. It's pretty easy, but there's a couple things you've got to know before you start using this to get it to work and get sound to come out. Uh, first thing you're going to do is plug your stereo into the wall, into the power. And then turn it on. This is your power button here. Just rotate it to on. And then to get the turntable to spin, you got to hit the start stop button. And see it starts spinning. Pretty simple. I'm going to show you two different ways you can play music from like a LP120 USB. One is through your computer and one is through a mixing board. So what I did is I opened up GarageBand, which is what you see here. This is GarageBand. So the first thing you want to do is plug your USB cable that comes out the back of your turntable. Plug that USB connector into the back of your computer into a USB port. You want to cl click on your little Apple left-hand corner, click on System Preferences, and go over here to Input and you want to select USB audio codec. Now it says USB audio codec because the turntable is connected to the computer. And it sees, the computer sees the computer is connected. If I, if I unplug this, if I unplug the computer, or unplug the turntable from the computer, that goes away. See how it disappeared? So once you get that set up, you set USB Kodak USB, and I don't know why this is set Telestream. I got this set up for my USB. Uh, my output is set up for my Sapphire, so I can hear. This is this is stands for my Sapphire Six USB audio interface, and my my external monitors are connected to that. So I'm going to listen to this either through my headphones, like I'm listening now, or through the speakers. Then you've got to go to GarageBand. You open up GarageBand. 
you select new project, choose, and just select connect to a good guitar or bass. And you're going to want to go up to GarageBand Preferences and click on Audio MIDI. And when it says Devices, select Output. I select Sapphire 6 USB because it, the output's going to be routed through my USB to my external monitors. For the input, you're going to put USB audio codec. And you should be able to hear the record playing now. So this is what you're hearing is a, a bootleg album I have of Paul McCartney and Donovan goofing around in the studio, in Abbey Road Studio in 1969. On the back of your Audio Technica turntable is a little black switch marked Phono and Line. You use Phono if you're plugging the turntable into a receiver that already has a preamp built into it. When you switch to Phono, this will bypass the preamp and the output level will be at Phono level. Only select Phono if you're plugging your turntable into a hi-fi system which has a Phono stage and preamp. Use Line if you're connecting to a sound card, powered speakers, or other auxiliary input. Set the switch to Line in this case. This will allow the turntable to use its own amplifier. If you're using the USB output, to connect the USB output to your computer, leave the switch in either position. To output the signal to an external mixing board, go to the inputs that are marked with RCA ins, connect red to red, white to white, adjust your volumes, and you're ready to go. I have mine set up to line out so that it'll play through my audio interface and broadcast through my Yamaha speakers. A turntable is a great thing to have if you're very nostalgic if you're somebody like me who's in his 50s or older and grew up on vinyl and you want to hear your old vinyl albums, it's a great thing to have. But honestly, I would say this turntable was tedious to use. Number one, it's very bulky. It's very heavy. This, this turntable's got to weigh at least 20 to 25 pounds. The, the bottom of it must be made out of cast iron or something. So you've got to find a place to put it, number one. And you have to make sure the shelf you put it on can, su can support that kind of weight. Number two, there's just too many ways to connect it to speakers. If you don't have powered speakers, you've got to go buy powered speakers. If you don't have an external mixing board like I do, you've got to have a mixing board. If you want to plug it into a computer, you've got to have software to listen to it. You know, you've got to have either Audacity or a GarageBand or another type of recording software to listen to it. I'm pretty sure. I didn't. I couldn't figure out any other way to get the music to play through my computer. Now, if I'm wrong, leave a message in the comments, and I'll pin it to the top. I have really extreme, you know, attention deficit, and and if things get too complex, I get overwhelmed and I give up. And this just seemed. This seems even now that I know how to operate it, I I I haven't used it in like a year, so I had to go back and figure out: Do I use Line? Do I use Phono? There's two different switches. What is Line? What is Phono? Do I need software? I need software to listen to it. Oh my God! You know, it's like, you know, I you know it. There are some benefits to vinyl. Vinyl sounds warmer, it has a warmer tone, and it has a more real, natural feel to the music. Um, but nowadays, I I. I think it would be better just to have more convenience, honestly. This is not a convenient item to have. Number one, you've got to take care of your vinyl. So if you're going to go out and buy a bunch of vinyl, if you're going to go out and buy like the entire, entire Beatles collection on vinyl, which I'm sure you can do today, or you can find it in a used record store, you're going to have to take care of those records if they're not in already in crappy shape. I mean, vinyl, if it gets too hot, or you keep your records by the sun, in, by a window, and it's sunny, the records will warp, and they'll be like this, and you can't play it. If they get scratched, they're ruined. If there's too much dust on it, it eats away at the vinyl, and the grooves disintegrate. There's all kinds of things you got to think about with vinyl that you don't have to think about with an MP3. And, uh, I, you know, I think this is neat to have, and I'm glad I have it. I'm fortunate that I got the chance to buy it, but I've only listened to records a couple times. I think it's a cumbersome heavy piece of equipment um 
I had to find a, I had to build this shelf so it would hold all my equipment to begin with. But I've got a, a dual cassette deck and, and a VHS, the DVD recorder. Both of them combined, when I lift them up, don't weigh nearly as much as this one turntable. It's, it's a good 25 pound turntable. So, you know, I would say if you want to be nostalgic, if you want to find out what records are like, I would say if you're younger and you and I I bet most people who are younger want to try this out to see what all of us old farts why we think vinyl is so cool. You'll try it, but you'll get bored with it and it won't be worth it because it's too much work. It's just oh, you gotta pull the record out of the sleeve and there's a sleeve inside the sleeve, and then you gotta make sure the the arm is balanced and the turntable and the platter's balanced and ah uh, enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just too too much. Too much junk to deal with. So if you like this uh, if you like this review, give me the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. Um, if I've missed anything on this, just let me know and uh, put a comment down there and let me know if I missed something. Um, you know, I don't know what else to say about it. I don't want to come out and say it's a piece of junk because it's not. It's a good turntable. It's got a great cartridge on it, great stylus. This is the nicest turntable I've ever had, but unfortunately it's about 30 years too late. I don't listen to records anymore. I don't even listen to whole albums. I can't remember the last time. Well, last time I listened to a whole album was was um, Crosby, Stills, and Nash or Tom Petty. I got, but I listened to it on Amazon Music. I don't listen to the vinyl. I haven't listened to a whole vinyl album probably probably in twenty in twenty five years. I very rarely listen to a whole album anymore. So there you have it. Take care. I'm signing off. Bye.